This is an exciting time to be alive. Um, um, and, um, alright. Back in mid-September, I began hearing about a group of protesters who had begun to occupy Wall Street. I didn't really know exactly what they were doing or why, but I figured that protesting Wall Street couldn't be a bad thing. I heard people talking about a We Are The 99% Tumblr and being inspired by the images on there, but I didn't even pay much attention to those. It wasn't until one of my Facebook friends posted this image that I began to get really worked up. This student, still in school, sees his or herself as not part of the 99% while working 30 plus hours a week at barely above minimum wage while attending college. I was livid. I found this horribly misinformed and offensive. What I was most annoyed with was that this student said if he or she were to have debt, he or she would not blame Wall Street for his or her own bad decisions. Bad decisions? Since when was acquiring debt through student loans a bad decision? Had I made a bad decision by pursuing a path to become an art teacher? A writer named Buster Blonde on the Persephone Magazine website addressed this in a post called Don't Even Get Me Started, Mythical Bootstraps College Student. It's worth a read and if you haven't yet, I've included a link in the doobly-doo. Over the next month or two, I found myself engaging in conversations on Facebook and otherwise with people who somehow are lucky enough to believe that there is no problem in this country. I've heard people refer to the protesters as people who just want to take our money. Our money. I'm assuming by using the word our in this case that these people consider themselves a part of the rich. The rich that are being taxed less than everybody else. Whose money? I've heard people talk about how CEOs of certain corporations have worked hard and deserve the money and the luxury that they have earned. Following this change of logic, it would seem that if I've worked hard, I would be so deserving as well. And since I've worked hard and things haven't worked out for me in the way that I expected them to, well, that's unfortunate for me. And if the CEOs worked hard and then things didn't work out for them, then it would be unfortunate for them too. But I remember sitting in my friend's house that fortunate day in 2008 and reading the front of the Wall Street Journal talking about Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac going under. And I remember hearing soon later that such large banks that were in danger of failing were requesting a taxpayer-funded bailout. And soon after it came out that this money, our money, right, was allowing them to experience luxury as usual. And in the wake of all of this taxpayer money being given to these large corporations to take luxurious vacations, spend $17 on a muffin, there was no longer enough money to fund schools and parks. Where have the schools or parks gone wrong? What did the children do to deserve to have schools closed, to have programs cut, to have class sizes? of 30 children. I've seen people criticize the Occupy movement by saying that they don't see what good camping is done. And they understand that if you want to protest in a park, that's fine, but, but why camp? Have we ever had such discussion about protesters in a park? Clearly, the camping matters. Then late one night, mid-November, I checked Facebook before going to bed. Two of my friends had posted a link to the Occupy Wall Street livestream. Something was going down. I got out of bed and I sat at my computer for an hour and a half just watching the live stream in which police and riot gear were conducting a middle of the night raid of the Occupy Wall Street encampment at Zuccotti Park. They closed the airspace above the camp, not allowing any media helicopters, and they quarantined all of the press to an area as far away from all of the protesters in action as possible, at one point parking two police vans in front of them and turning the engines on. Many members of the press were arrested, and many protesters were treated violently. I watched in horror as police came in and ripped apart the camp as though it were trash. It reminded me of that part in Cinderella where the evil stepsisters come and rip apart Cinderella's dress that the singing mice had helped her construct. Why raid in the middle of the night? And why the media blackout? Well, you might do your best to remove the mainstream media. The fact is, these days, many people get their news from other sources. I spent the night and much of the next day just following the hashtag OccupyWallStreet on Twitter to learn about injustices that were occurring. There have been numerous instances of police brutality at other Occupy encampments, and by now I hope you've seen the video of the students being pepper sprayed at UC Davis. Students who were protesting in solidarity with the students at UC Berkeley who had been victims of police brutality. It's scary to learn that the people whose salaries your tax dollars pay can be turned against you. Peaceful has been a key word of the Occupy movement. So why are governments trying to violently suppress it? It's a good time to be a corporation in America. As a leaked Citibank memo confirms, 
the wealthy pretty much run the government. And we still have the right to vote. But who do you vote for when money is corrupting everyone? A major stated goal of the Occupy movement is to remove money from politics. No more campaign contributions. A criticism I've heard about the movement is that many of the protesters are using smartphones or patronizing Starbucks or the like. And while I do agree that your dollar is your vote and purchases made to large corporations is indeed supporting them, I would much rather see somebody join the effort who has supported the enemy in these small ways than have that person sit home, do nothing, and probably continue to support the enemy in even larger ways. So they sell us smartphones and digital cameras and we use it against them when they try to conduct a media blackout and we stay connected with the weapons they've provided us. It's exciting because they're occupying everywhere. They're not just occupying Wall Street. There are encampments all over the country and indeed all over the world. People are upset about injustices and they're no longer willing to just stay silent. I keep hearing people say, deal with it. We've been dealing with it. And we're dealing with it now, in the best way we know how. By mobilizing. By saying something. I'm so glad that for our forefathers, dealing with it didn't mean just staying silent. This country has a history of people protesting and people making a difference. And the first step to overcoming any problem is admitting you have a problem. And in order to admit that you have a problem, you have to know you have a problem. The Occupy movement is waking up a lot of people. Sorry if it's caused you some annoyance. I'm sure people are occupying or gathering somehow in your area somewhere. There is an Occupy Albany movement and there's actually an encampment. On the two-month anniversary of Occupy Wall Street was the day of action and I ran down after work to try to join fellow protesters in the Capitol building. Unfortunately, I was a wee bit late and missed much of the action, but I took the opportunity to poke around the encampment. I got to talk to many people and I was even offered some meals. I hung around for the General Assembly meeting, which is actually my second General Assembly meeting. This one was much smaller than the ones that were occurring perhaps weekly before the physical occupation actually started. And then on Black Friday, I participated in Occupy Black Friday in the two local malls. It was a sort of flash mob and people came together and sang two carols. The first was Jingle Bells, just as you know it. And the second was Slow Down Ye Frantic Shoppers to the tune of God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen. It was a really cool thing to participate in. I've included a ton of links in the doobly-doo with different articles and information for you to read more about different things. And one that you should definitely check out is The Story of Broke, made by the same people who made the video The Story of Stuff, which I'm a big fan of. The Story of Broke sort of describes in a really easy to understand the problem with the economy now. And if you click on no other links in the description, be sure to check out the Adbusters post that started the whole thing. It's a large movement and messages can get a little confusing sometimes, but I think it helps to get back to the roots. Our country was not founded by people who are complacent with the way things were. It is absolutely patriotic to stand up and make a change in the best way we know how. Democracy would be a beautiful thing if that's actually what we had. Occupy if you can, support local encampments if you can, and if nothing else, just spread the word. Educate yourself and others because many choose to shelter themselves and have no idea what's going on. A better world is possible. Thank you.